Scarlet or Blade. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Silent Night, Memoirs of a Royal Guard, Chapter 9. Iridescence? I asked into the dark room. I heard her roll over on her bunk to look my way. Royal blue magic illuminated around her horn as she cast light for us to see without blinding. Easy there, she said. Are you starting a conversation? Softly I snorted. I could start conversations. I just chose not to. Maybe I am. You must still be high on your victory. It was just a board game, she reminded me. It is a game that requires strategy, planning, and tactics. It was a good exercise, I said, but then rolled over to face her. That isn't what I wanted to talk about, though. How come you didn't ask for the night off to go to the gala? You'd have a fit in perfectly there, at least until the riot started. Iridescence laughed quietly. I was waiting for a particular stallion to ask me. He never did. I frowned, really? That seems like a mean thing to do. Oh, it wasn't intentional. I just think he isn't aware that I'm around, she explained. I laughed a little. Wow, he must be pretty thick-headed then. What kind of pony could be so blind to the fact that you're one of the prettiest unicorns in Canterlot? She laughed too, shaking her head and looking at me with amusement. Our eyes met and she answered, Well, it takes all kinds, you know. But thank you for saying I'm pretty. The prettiest, I corrected, before rolling over onto my back again and tucking the sheets up. That stallion must be pretty unobservant. I couldn't imagine. Iridescence let the light on the tip of her horn go out, and I could hear her giggling a bit. You might try, she said, snickering. What does that mean? The next morning we slept in for a little while. Even though our shifts were exactly opposite, Iridescence and I spent our days off together. I have an adventure planned for us today, she said. I silently prayed to Celestia that it wasn't another trip to file and Philly Alchemist Supply. Iridescence loved to make her to take me there and help me pick out scents for her. Oh, it was slowly killing me. I always thought she smelled just fine as is. Oh? Yes, you and I are going on a train ride. I've heard a new shop opened up in Ponyville. Rumor has it that they carry all sorts of games. I thought we could go over, find something new to play, and get the princess a gift. That sounded like a great idea. Board games weren't silly like hats. They kept your mind sharp. Okay, I said. While she got dressed, she had been wearing dresses lately when we went out. Nothing fancy, but... More than the everyday mane and coat. Today she wore blue like my mane. I wonder where she found things like that or how she afforded them. By this point she had filled her footlocker and mine too. That was perfectly fine though. I don't have any clothing. Once she was ready we headed out to the train station. Typically we walked everywhere. The train ride sounded like fun but it also served as a reminder that I rarely flew anymore. I needed to do something about that. Iridescence bought our tickets, and we were off. I sat across from her, looking out the window and enjoying the scenery. She just seemed to watch me for the most of the trip. You really are just yourself, aren't you? She asked. That struck me as a strange question. What do you mean? You don't pretend to be any other pony than yourself. She said, you're comfortable being Silent Night. Is that you, or is that your father's doing? This conversation was getting even odder. I stretched my wings out a bit and said, I like to think it is me. I realize ponies sometimes act differently depending on where they are or who they're with. My mom always told me that if some pony doesn't like me for who they are, they aren't worth worrying about. You don't talk about your mother much. I shrugged. She and my father disagreed a lot. We just wanted to make sure I'd get out okay as an adult. Iridescence nodded and thought, that must be nice. You wanted to be a royal guard, so that is who you are. She looked out the window and 
I had a feeling there was something else going on there. Subtext. It's something... Is something wrong, Iridescence? You seem sad. I'd caught her off guard. I guess she was accustomed to me missing subtext. She got up and sat down next to me, maybe a little. Why? You never pry into my business. I blinked a few times and quipped. You're sad because I don't pry? Iridescence smiled a little, which was a good sign, and softly pushed me, No, you dolt. I mean, you never pry in general. You give me all the privacy and space I want. Why now? You look sad, I said plainly, but that wasn't enough. I shifted, adding I don't like the idea of you being sad. I slipped my wing around her shoulder. Aren't you sweet? She whispered and leaned against me. I miss my family, even if they aren't perfect. Spending time with you reminds me of how important friends are. I miss my parents and sister, especially Dot. Don't get me wrong, I lo really like hanging around with you. It doesn't mean I miss my family and old friends any less, though. No. When it is just the job, it is easy to forget what love feels like. You know what I mean? I did. My father sent me away from Cloudsdale before I started secondary school. I was alone one day, in and day out, terrified, sad, without comfort. It made me strong, but I wouldn't do that to my own cult. Yes, I said soothingly. Manhattan just feels so far away lately. Perhaps you should take a vacation and go home for a little while, I suggested. I'm sure the captain can assign some pony else temporarily. He said it himself that we all need time off. What about you? Don't you want to go home? Iridescence asked. Sure, I thought. Who wouldn't? It had not crossed my mind in a long time, however, and I wondered why. I tugged Iridescence a little closer with my wing, and I said... I am home, and left it at that. Guess my look said enough, and she let it drop. We rode the rest of the way to Ponyville like that. Ponyville was larger than I had imagined. It wasn't a densely packed town like Canterlot, but it was spread out. There was a lot of breathing room, and that was nice. Iridescence's spirits had improved dramatically, and we wandered around the town window shopping. The captain's sister loves here, lives here, you know? She said matter-of-factly, in fact, all of the elements of harmony live here. It seems somewhat unlikely that six strangers could do what the entire royal guard couldn't, doesn't it? With a light shrug, I said, I can't pretend to understand magic. You amaze me when you levitate game pieces. It makes me jealous until I remember I can fly. She laughed, just game pieces, huh? How about my sword? Certainly better than clumsy hooves and mouth. Those are fighting words, I said and bumped her with my flank. While we were bantering, we drifted off course and found ourselves in front of the pinkest cottage I had ever seen in my life. The mailbox was heart-shaped, and were, as were the windows and the weather vane. We may need directions to the store, Iridescent said as she turned up to walk to the little cottage. I followed along behind her. She raised her hoof, but before she could knock, the door suddenly opened. A fluffy pink pony that likes of which I had never seen before gasped excitedly when she saw us. Oh, hello there. We're looking for the new game store in town. Pfft, the pink pony said, her tongue poking out and flapping. She pointed vaguely in the direction and added, I see. Iridescent said, turning in that direction. Around the town hall, then? The pony, the pony added and said, <sniffs> Again, but this time it sounded different. Thank you, Iridescent said, and we turned to walk in that direction. The door shut behind us, and I asked, You understood her? Not a word. Now, get your flank up in the sky and find the place. No additional coaxing was needed. It was time to fly. I leapt into the air, spread my wings, and soared high. Ponyville looked a lot smaller from that vantage point, 
and it didn't take too long for me to spot what looked like a store we were looking for. It was near Main Street and had two large peoples, those generic wooden pony figures that are used in a lot of games, out front. I circled longer than unnecessary, since it felt wonderful to have wind in my mane again. Keeping iridescence waiting seemed rude, however, so I turned in and spiraled down, landing at her side. I said, It is on the other side of town. Great. We should probably check it out before it gets too late. She responded, and we were off. You know, I enjoy watching you fly. You should do it more often to keep your wings strong. You're right, I said, as we trotted along the wide streets of Ponyville looking at the various stores. Sometimes I forget that I can fly. We just stand there all day, I added as we reached the store. Iridescent smiled. Well, don't. For now, however, it is time to find some new games and a gift for the princess. Try to find something more thematic. You're too into strategy games. What was wrong with strategy games? Perhaps the princess and iridescence were tired of my winning streak. I shrugged and wandered into the store. If you're into board games, it was pretty impressive. Every wall was stocked with the latest and greatest games. There was even a section of small independent titles. I started there. After all, a royal guard should look for out for the little guy. One game caught my attention with a brightly colored box. It had four colorful young dragons on the cover. They were cute. Super cute, actually. I looked over at Iridescence. She liked cute, and I didn't mind that sort of thing. After all, a stallion can like cute things without being unstallion-y. I read the back of the box for more details. A light strategy card game where each player takes the role of a baby dragon trying to build a treasure hoard. Light strategy. Light doesn't count, right? I looked at Iridescence again, and took the game over, thinking, Look at the cute dragon, ignore the strategy part. What did you find? Something off the independent table, huh? I held up the game box for her to see. Wow, that looks adorable. What's it about? Baby dragon stealing treasure, I said. She looked at me, then at the box. Keep calm, no motion. I stared back at her blankly, as if I were back at the academy. Okay, she finally said. Iridescence picked out a couple of games for herself and one for Princess Luna. Our gift. Which I use the word our loosely because she paid. It was a game about giant monsters fighting over Manhattan, which seemed kind of funny. With our purchases in my saddlebags, we headed back towards the train station. The train wasn't due for another 15 minutes or so, and we found ourselves standing there, waiting. A faded poster on the wall caught my attention. It featured a yellow pegasus with a pink mane all dolled up. She was holding a mug of cider, clearly some sort of advertisement. Do you think she's pretty? Iridescence asked in my ear, suddenly right beside me. She moved too quietly for a pony. They didn't teach that sort of thing in the academy, either. Weighing my options, I said, I think you're prettier, and I'm somewhat tired of shameless advertising and product placement in everything we read. See? Or watch. And this doesn't make me want to buy cider. Aren't you a smart cookie? Iridescent said, turning back to the train. You're right, though. Everything is about advertisement. The next thing you know, it will start turning up in Princess Luna's fan fiction. I snorted advertisements in fan fiction. What sort of monster would do that? Author's oh, note a brief cameo from Flufflepuff. Anyways, I hope you guys have had a wunderbar day. <laughs>